Church President, I'm getting back to the question that was raised at the beginning and particularly to the reference you made to the 0.25% reduction in the interest rate. You mentioned this as if it was an action which was looking towards the future and this is not something that we totally agree with particularly if we're looking at the long-term future. So I'd like to come back to this point in particular. You said, President, that this measure was able to be taken because the inflationary pressure was under control. In 2011, when we had a very well-controlled inflationary system situation, the ECB increased interest rates twice on two separate occasions. That contributed to a worsening of the recession in many countries across Europe. So given that context, what I'd like to ask is that as the ECB has had to redefine its strategy several times, particularly with regard to reference rates, I'd like to ask you, given the fact that we're not seeing any economic recovery, we're not seeing the green shoots of recovery anytime soon, do you think that the interest rates or the reference rates might be reduced even further in the medium term or in the short term? Because this may... Uh, spell a change in the long term and also why not uh, negative uh, interest rates particularly in the times of crisis that we're experiencing uh, would you consider this as an option to achieve your uh, targets for the long term particularly for the central european countries and those countries uh, which have a more integrated economies also you made a very specific reference to Portugal. You said that Portugal is supposedly on a good uh, path towards meeting its objectives uh, in terms of budgetary discipline. My question is, and I'm concluding on this, if we have a proper banking supervision, do you think this kind of structure in place in the national countries such as Portugal could be superseded one day? Let me... Um let me say, just you mentioned about the monetary policy undertaken last year with, uh, with the two increases in interest rates, and you linked this to the recession. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, the recession that we are seeing today was to some extent the byproduct of uh, something that uh, started last year in uh, around August or September. And... Uh, it was mostly the um, credit, uh, the credit, the fall in credit that uh, took place mostly in the second part of last year. This fall in credit was due essentially to, I would say, two reasons. One is the funding needs of the banking system, the prospective funding needs of the banking system in the first part of this year. Uh, which were 230 billion euros of bank bonds coming due in the first quarter of this year, plus 300 billion, approximately 300 billion of sovereign bonds coming due in the first quarter of this year. The banks last year, most banks in most of the euro area, by September, October, stopped lending because they were fearful they could not cope with these funding needs. And that's why what led us to do the two LTRO operations by year end, which resolved the funding needs. So to some extent, to a great extent, I would say the present condition of the economic condition of the euro area is not due to interest rates being too high, but it was due to lack of liquidity and the implied credit policies. The second reason for this is that the current fragmentation of the euro area, which exasperated these funding needs because it didn't allow funds to circulate in the euro area from one country to another. So that's, that's what gives a picture of uh, the present situation. We, as we realize that the inflation, uh, the inflation uh, rate path is moving favorably from the viewpoint of price stability in the medium term, 
We also thought it was a wise thing to lower interest rates in the last governing council. Whether we are going to do more than that, as uh, some, many people here would actually uh, know the answer, I, I'm not asking all of you here, the ones I know, what the answer would be, because you would certainly say we never pre-commit. We have to look at what the uh, situation is, we'll look at the data, the developments, and then we'll make up our minds in the governing council about what next actions we'll do. Finally, on your final point about Portugal, I think uh, what I said before stays, namely that within the limits of our mandate, we do everything that is needed to improve the situation in the euro area from a price stability in both sides, from a price stability viewpoint. Thank you.